you make me wanna shout, kick my heel. Everybody that I talked to tonight said you were the ones they wanted to meet. Wow, what a compliment. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. It was with great sorrow that Ron Isley lost his older brother, Rudolph Isley, a singer and songwriter best known as a founding member of the chart-topping R&B group, the Isley Brothers, at the age of 84. A publicist for the group confirmed the news to Entertainment Weekly and provided a statement from Ronald Isley saying, There are no words to express my feelings and the love I have for my brother. Our family will miss him. But I know he's in a better place. Rudolph Isley formed the iconic group with his siblings O'Kelly, Ronald, and Vernon as a young man. The fledgling group sang at their local church in a Cincinnati suburb and moved on to perform at churches throughout the region, even winning a competition on Ted Max Amateur Hour series. However, they disbanded in 1955 after Vernon, the lead vocalist, was hit by a car and unalived at just 13. The group went on making music, though Rudolph left the group in 1989 to become a Christian minister. He was, however, part of the group inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1992. The Isley Brothers, a name synonymous with the evolution of R&B and soul music, have left an indelible mark in the hearts of millions. Behind the scenes, however, the group's journey was marred by internal conflicts that threatened to dismantle their legacy. At the heart of this discord was the tumultuous relationship between Ron Isley and his older brother, Rudolph. While the loss of his brother had affected Ronald deeply, it had only been recently that Rudolph Isley had sued him, his own brother, for allegedly trying to secure a trademark for the Isley brothers exclusively under his name. The lawsuit, which was filed and obtained by Rolling Stone, was seeking a judicial declaration that the Isley brothers' mark was jointly owned by the brothers. Rudolph claimed he was unaware of the degree to which Ronald exploited the mark and wanted the judge to order Ronald to account for and pay the 50% share. Rudolph said he was owed for any proceeds derived from the trademark. But court documents are saying Ron underhandedly went and got ownership of the Isley Brother trademark mm. and has been getting all the money since 2021. Rudolph and Ronald co-founded the Isley Brothers with their late brother O'Kelly in 1954, and Rudolph's suit claimed that, at all times, the band operated as a common law partnership, sharing expenses, profits, and control of the band's business. Even as the band's lineup grew and expanded, the lawsuit claimed the group remained an equal partnership under the sole ownership, direction, and control of its founding members. Rudolph claimed that after O'Kelly's death in 1986, he and Ronald were left with a 50% share of ownership in the band and the Isley Brothers trademark. Rudolph stepped back from the band himself in 1989, but remained active in promoting and managing the group's properties, such as a 2018 publishing deal and a recent licensing deal involving the use of Shout in a Super Bowl commercial. The lawsuit stated that the two brothers were still equal owners of all rights and interests of the group, and neither party had the authority to enter into deals without the consent of the other. Rudolph claimed, however, that on November 2, 2021, Ronald struck out on his own and filed an application to register exclusive rights to the Isley Brothers mark with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office for Goods and Services related to visual recordings and audiovisual recordings featuring music and animation. The Trademark Office approved the application on Org. 16, 2022. Fans were surprised that Ronald would try to benefit from his own family. But looking back, this wasn't the only time he had been sued for stealing from his brothers. And of course, he and his team claimed the assertions from his brother were false. Included in Rudolph's filing was a copy of the aforementioned letter Ronald's attorney, Navarro Gray, sent Rudolph's counsel. In the letter, Gray insisted that Ronald did not set up a separate entity to receive Isley Brothers related revenue, but rather his own corporate entity to do business solely related to his own musical and entertainment career. The letter also asserted that Ronald had more claim to the Isley Brothers mark 
because he's the one who is actually and actively using the mark in commerce during or near the time of registration. The letter went on to state, Our research shows that Rudolph Isley has not used the mark or been part of the Isley Brothers brand since 1986 and not performed with the Isley Brothers since the death of their brother O'Kelly Isley. However, it would be only for the years that Rudolph was a working member of the Isley Brothers group, the correspondence continued. Rudolph retired in 1986, has had no involvement in any of the compositions or body of works done after he retired, and has not performed with the Isley Brothers since the death of O'Kelly Isley. Because the owner of a trademark is the person who is actually and actively using the mark in commerce during or near the time of registration, Ronald Isley's team claimed that Rudolph Isley no longer qualified for partial ownership of the band name. The controversies extended beyond the courtroom, affecting the group's dynamics and their ability to work together. The once unbreakable bond between the brothers was strained as accusations and counter-accusations became public, turning private grievances into fodder for the media. The legal wrangling took a toll on both brothers, emotionally and financially as they fought over the legacy they had built together. The situation was further complicated by the involvement of other family members and the business entanglements that often accompany success in the music industry. Rudolph's tragic death added a somber note to the feud, casting a long shadow over the family and the Isley brothers' legacy. Before Rudolph took his brother to court, their youngest, Marvin Isley, had previously taken both of them to court for royalties and a portion of their late brother O'Kelly's estate. Marvin had been seeking a share of O'Kelly's estate, despite his brother's argument that he signed away his rights to the band properties in 1991. Luckily, the financial feud between the Isley brothers was settled, as reported by the Associated Press. They claimed that Marvin Isley had reportedly accepted a payment of $250,000 from his brothers Ronald and Rudolph, and that he had eventually backed down. Tragically enough, after receiving his share, Marvin Isley also passed away. He had been a bassist who provided the foundation for his family's hitmaking R&B band, but had unfortunately died at a hospice near his home in Chicago at 56. The cause of his death was diabetes, as claimed by Chris Jasper, a brother-in-law who was the Isley Brothers keyboard player for many years. Marvin Isley had fought diabetes for more than 20 years and in 1997 lost his legs to the disease. The Isley Brothers had been revered as music legends, but Ron Isley's journey through the peaks of musical success and the valets of financial turmoil became a tale of stark contrasts. Known for his golden voice and charismatic stage presence, Ron Isley's personal finances painted a different picture, one mired in controversy and legal battles. His financial woes culminated in a highly publicized bankruptcy, shedding light on the precarious balance between fame and fiscal responsibility. The roots of Ron Isley's financial troubles can be traced back to a series of decisions that, while common in the entertainment industry, are fraught with risk. The lavish lifestyle that often accompanies stardom, combined with mismanagement and a lack of financial oversight, set the stage for his downfall. However, it was his issues with the IRS that brought these problems into the public eye. Ron Isley's conviction for tax evasion in 2006 was a pivotal moment, highlighting the consequences of neglecting financial obligations. Owing $3.1 million in back taxes, his situation was a stark reminder of the importance of financial literacy and accountability. The bankruptcy filing revealed the extent of his debts and the years of financial delinquency that had led to this point. The IRS's seizure of his assets, including a yacht and cars, was a dramatic fall from grace for the music icon. Before being sued by his brothers, Ronald had been indicted for evading taxes by the government's most dreaded agency. The IRS alleged Isley had been avoiding paying taxes by depositing his dead brother's royalty checks, buying personal cars using a business account, and paying band members in cash to keep the transactions off the books. What really annoyed the public was the fact that Ron Isley was actually using his own brother's royalty checks for himself. The feds contended that the singer was involved in a host of deceptive practices, 
Among the charges, the agency said the singer deposited royalty checks for his own use that had been issued to other members of the Isley brothers, including his dead brother, O'Kelly. Not only did the silky-voiced soul man known as Mr. Biggs apparently forget to file taxes over the last few years, he declared bankruptcy after the IRS seized his yacht and millions of dollars worth of other property in 1997. Ron was sent to prison for three years, but weirdly, whenever he talks about the three years he spent in prison for tax evasion, there's no bitterness or anger in his voice. At times, there almost seems to be a bit of nostalgia as if he had actually enjoyed his time in prison. I went in as a king. Everybody there treated me like a king. When I first went in there, there were 300 people there, and those 300 people were behind me 100%. And when I say 100%, I really mean that, he added. What can we get for you? Do you need this? Do you need that? 24 hours a day, and that's a blessing. Ron's prison experience was probably a bit different from the average person incarcerated for a tax offense. But the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer doesn't credit his good fortune to his legendary status. Instead, he credits a more potent factor. We have a lot of faith in God, number one, and we always know that he's with us, so that will carry you through anything, he said. Ron had just released an album with his brother Ernie, Baby Making Music, and had another hit, Just Came Here to Chill, when he was sentenced in 2006 to three years in prison for failure to pay taxes. Ron, who still proclaims his innocence, said the government tried to get him to take a plea deal and spend a few months in jail. I didn't want to go away for no time at all, so I figure, being that I'd been to court over a 100 times, that this would be something that would go away, he said. I was wrong in figuring that. Ron was a new father when he went to prison, and he also left behind his wife. It wasn't really behind bars. Isley describes it as sort of a camp with plenty of open space, but there were plenty of restrictions. You were just held away from what you wanted to do. All the telephone calls, you gotta go to bed a certain time, he said. Ron sang about once a month and participated in some shows there. I did shows for them, man. I did some of the best shows in my career. The Isley Brothers, with Ron at the forefront, were pioneers, blending soul, funk, and rock in ways that had never been heard before. Hits like Twist and Shout, This Old Heart of Mine, and It's Your Thing, became anthems of their era, showcasing the group's versatility and Ron's distinctive voice. However, it was their ability to evolve with the times that cemented their place in music history. The introduction of the alter ego Mr. Big in the late 1990s, a collaboration with R. Kelly, marked a new chapter for Ron Isley, connecting him with a younger audience and demonstrating his ability to remain relevant despite the industry's changing landscape. As I get closer to the stairway. The collaboration with R. Kelly in particular became a point of contention as Kelly faced his own legal battles. Critics questioned Ron's decision to align with the embattled artist, but the success of their collaborations, including the hit Contagious, underscored the complex interplay between art and controversy. His willingness to embrace new sounds and partnerships, even those that sparked debate, highlighted his commitment to musical innovation over conformity. Ron's marriage to Angela Winbush, a talented singer and songwriter in her own right, was a union that brought together two powerful forces in the music industry. Their collaboration extended beyond their personal relationship, producing music that resonated with fans across the globe. However, the blending of their professional and personal lives also led to challenges. The pressures of the music industry, coupled with the intense scrutiny that comes with celebrity relationships, tested their bond. While their marriage ultimately ended in divorce, the music they created together remains a testament to their artistic synergy. The controversy surrounding Isley's marriage did not end with his first wife. His relationship with Candy Johnson Isley, a background singer who is significantly younger than him, raised eyebrows and sparked discussions about age differences in relationships. Despite the criticism, Ron and Candy's union looks like it has been characterized by mutual respect and love, demonstrating his belief in the power of love to transcend societal norms. 
Their marriage, which has endured the test of time, is a narrative of resilience and commitment, standing as a counterpoint to the controversies that have surrounded Isley's personal life. Ron's role as a father has also been a significant aspect of his personal narrative. The birth of his son, Ronald Isley Jr., at a time when Isley was facing legal and financial turmoil, added a new dimension to his life. Fatherhood brought a renewed sense of purpose and perspective, motivating Ron to overcome the challenges he faced. The joy and responsibility of raising a child in the midst of personal controversies have been both a grounding force and a source of inspiration for Ron, influencing his music and his outlook on life. Following his release from prison, Ron faced the monumental task of rebuilding his career and reputation. The stigma of incarceration could have been a career-ending obstacle for many, but for Ron Isley, it served as a catalyst for transformation. Embracing his past mistakes and the lessons learned, he returned to the music scene with a renewed sense of purpose and creativity. Isley's comeback was about reclaiming his position as a respected elder statesman in the industry, acknowledging his past while firmly looking towards the future. Collaborations with contemporary artists and producers helped bridge the gap between generations, introducing his timeless sound to a new audience. These collaborations were not without their controversies, as Ron navigated the complexities of working with artists who had their own legal and moral challenges. Yet, these partnerships underscored his commitment to musical innovation and his belief in redemption and second chances. The release of new albums post-incarceration showcased Ron's undiminished vocal prowess and his ability to adapt to the evolving musical landscape. Tracks like No More and collaborations with artists such as Lauryn Hill and Aretha Franklin were artistic statements reflecting his journey through hardship and his emergence stronger and more resilient. These projects were a mix of reflection, celebration, and a declaration that Ron Isley was back, not just to reclaim his place, but to redefine it. The Isley brothers' journey through the annals of music history is marked by their pioneering fusion of genres, from R&B and soul to funk, rock, and beyond. Their ability to seamlessly blend these styles not only set them apart, but also laid the groundwork for future musical innovations. Hits like Shout, That Lady, and Between the Sheets became anthems of their times, influencing a wide array of artists across genres and decades. However, the path to legendary status was fraught with challenges, not least of which were the personal and legal controversies that often shadowed their achievements. I've been decades in the business. Wow. What, eight? Ever since uh, 1959 was the first hit record, shout. The legal battles over copyrights and royalties, the internal feuds among the brothers, and Ron Isley's personal legal issues painted a backdrop of controversy that contrasted sharply with their musical success. Yet it was perhaps these very challenges that imbued their music with a depth and authenticity that resonated with fans worldwide. Despite these challenges, the Isley Brothers' influence on the music industry is undeniable. Their music has been sampled by countless artists in the hip-hop and R&B genres, a testament to their lasting impact and relevance. This sampling culture not only introduced their sound to new generations, but also sparked discussions about copyright, creativity, and the legacy of artists. The Isley Brothers' ability to remain relevant through these samples, even amid controversies, speaks to the universal appeal and timeless quality of their music. Moreover, the Isley Brothers' legacy is not just in their music, but also in their resilience and ability to navigate the tumultuous waters of the music industry. They have become symbols of perseverance, inspiring artists to remain true to their creative visions despite the challenges they may face. The controversies that once threatened to overshadow their achievements have instead become part of their rich tapestry, adding layers of complexity and humanity to their story. After Rudolph passed away, a fan on Twitter said, Legendary music artist Rudolph Isley has sadly passed away at age 84. He was currently suing his brother Ron Isley for trademark infringement for buying the rights to their group name, the Isley Brothers underneath him, and profiting off the name without him. 
The Isley Brothers' legacy was multifaceted, shaped by their musical genius, as well as the controversies and challenges they've overcome. Tell us in the comment section what your thoughts are on Ron Isley taking from his siblings. Was he greedy or was he bankrupt? Anyway, may all the Isley siblings who have passed away rest in peace. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.